Now, just to flesh out some of this climate and energy debate and try and expose some of the facts so many ignore, I want to head up to Gladstone in Queensland, where there are huge plans backed by billions of dollars of taxpayers' taxpayer-funded grants and government incentives to shift away from coal-fired power to renewable energy and so-called green hydrogen. We know that the newest form of the cheapest form of new energy is renewables. So if you have that, then you will have cheap, clean energy driving advanced manufacturing in areas like that, this, in Gladstone. Yeah, there was more money on this stuff in this year's budget and private companies and the Port of Gladstone, they've been filling in the locals about the details of what's planned. But is it feasible or believable? I'm joined by the LMP member for the federal seat of Flynn in Gladstone, Colin Boyce. Good to talk to you, Colin. Tell us first up about these grand plans for renewable energy and green hydro in Gladstone. It sounds too good to be true, and we know what things that normally sound too good to be true, they usually turn out to be very much too good to be true. Yeah, well, good evening, uh, Chris. And uh, just to put the viewers in the picture, uh, there was a presentation given here in Gladstone to uh, produce uh, some 4 million tonnes of green hydrogen. And that will require, according to the presentation, 110 gigawatts of renewable energy to be constructed. Now, most people don't know what a gigawatt is, but I will tell you, that is approximately double the entire generating capacity of the Australian grid right now. They're proposing to build 10,000 wind turbines and 2,500 square kilometres of solar panels just to power this green hydrogen Colin, idea that they have to produce 4 million tonnes. Yeah, Colin, we can just get this graphic up on screen. I want to show people. This is a slide that was shown to people at that meeting. If we just go to the other slide, please. The other slide that was shown... No, no... Maybe there we are, the third one. Uh, that's exactly it. Now, as you say, uh, Colin, up the top there it says 110 gigawatts and a massive investment and a little uh, windmill, wind turbine symbol there saying 10,000 wind turbines at 4.8 megawatts each. That's $4 million each. That's $40 billion worth of wind turbines and the, underneath that sun symbol, 2,500 kilometres squared of solar farms. This is just extraordinary uh, level of investment. Are they telling you that this will actually happen? And how much land will it cover around Gladstone? Well, again, I think this is absolutely insane. Uh, where will you put 10,000 wind turbines? Given a wind turbine's footprint is somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 50 hectares of land, where are they going to take up this land space and put these wind turbines? Are they going to put them out in the ocean on the Great Barrier Reef? That's an interesting question that hasn't been answered. As far as the solar panels go, uh, 2,500 square kilometres of solar panels in one block is 100 kilometres long, 25 kilometres wide. That's how big it is. And that is absolutely insane. Tell me then, Colin, the, the big question is this, isn't it? Uh, is this something that people of, uh, the people of Gladstone and that area are welcoming? Because uh, according to the government it's, and some of the companies involved, this is going to be amazing investment, jobs, profitability. It's going to boost the economy. Or are people more worried about 10,000 wind turbines and 2,500 square kilometres of solar panels? Well, I would suggest most people aren't even aware of this, Chris, and uh, the reality of, of hydrogen is hydrogen is something that you need reliable, cheap energy, you need reliable water, and you need a market. And we don't have any of them yet. But here we've got a federal government that is putting some $8 billion towards hydrogen hubs in the last budget recently. Uh, so that is just welfare for billionaire companies. It's extraordinary. Double, uh, basically doubling the amount of renewable energy and even wind turbines in one lo nationally in one location. It doesn't seem feasible, but we'll get some more expert advice. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, Colin. I appreciate it.